I was a freelancer for about two and a half years and I hear a lot of people talking about how they want to be freelancers, how they want to quit their nine to fives and just be a digital nomad and travel the world. And I know it sounds really glamorous, it sounds really fun, but let me tell you, being a freelancer may not be for everyone. And these are the seven questions I would ask myself if I ever wanted to go back to that freelancing life or that business owner life. And I'm hoping that these seven questions will help you too if you're thinking about going into the freelancer lifestyle. The first question you should ask yourself is, are you comfortable wearing many hats? As a freelancer, I found that I was doing everything from accounting to the actual design work, to marketing, to sales, business development, HR, basically I was everything. If you have corporate experience, you would know that in the company, there are so many different departments, so many people under each department, because that's the amount of labor it takes to really have a business take off sometimes. And as a freelancer, you're going to have to understand that you are now going to have at least some understanding of accounting. Of course, you can outsource that. Of course, you can get a company to do it. But I think it's so important for you to at least know how these financial things work for your business. And you're also going to have to do your own sales. You're, if you're that quintessential quiet introvert designer or artist, this might be a bit challenging. At least it was for me. Sales and marketing it has always been one of my weaknesses points when it comes to pitching and just cold emailing and calling and interviewing and meeting and networking there's just a lot that goes into being a freelancer and of course you have the actual design work hopefully you get high ticket clients but sometimes depending on the economy depending on the culture depending on where you are there might be some lowball clients that you'll just have to take up to have enough finances to tide through that month or that few months so taking on multiple smaller clients could lead to a huge amount of workload just so that you can have a decent salary for that month. This was all a part of my experience. Of course, there were really, really great months, but there are also not as great months, which is my next question. How well do you handle uncertainty? So as a salaried worker, of course, you just do your job well, do the whole corporate thing, and then you have a fixed salary at the end of every month. There's no questions. You're definitely going to have a decent amount every single month. But as a freelancer, there are retainer clients where if you work with that client long term, you do the job every single month. It's almost like a fixed salary, but most clients, at least from my experience, will not pay like a full salary worker salary. They're normally paying like a contract kind of salary or a freelancer salary, which is significantly less than a full timer. So as a freelancer, you're going to have to take on not just the retainer clients, but you're also going to have project based clients that may or may not come each month. You never really know. It really depends on your own sales funnels and your own marketing. But with the uncertainty of projects coming in, you're going to have really good months and you're going to have really bad months. And especially at the start, you're probably going to have to work really hard to start building up your portfolio to get clients and even if you have a solid portfolio with solid clients it's still ups and downs so you're gonna have to be really good at handling risk and uncertainty as a freelancer the next question is do you have great time management skills as a freelancer I was not doing the best <laughs> in some of my months because I would have months where I worked until 3 a.m and it felt like I was at my desk the entire day because of the number of projects that I took on, because of the people that I had to manage, which is another point I'm gonna get into, because of all the client communications, because of all the meetings. Think about it, as a freelancer, you probably don't just have one client, you probably have three, four, five. At one point, I even had seven or eight, which is highly unadvisable. But that just means you have a lot of tabs open in your brain and you really have to be very productive and efficient with the time that you have. So that is a really important question that you could ask yourself. It's not a be all and all. Like if you have poor time management skills now, there's always ways and tactics and methods to improve that skill. But I would say time management is a really essential skill as a freelancer. Some tools that I use for time management would be just calendar tools, especially Google Calendar since all the meetings are scheduled on Google Calendar. Using it and learning how to use it is really important. I also personally started using Notion. I use it for my to-do lists and I normally write down my to-do lists as well. So that helps me keep track of the things that I have to do since the list could be quite long sometimes. And I like to break down tasks into smaller chunks not just like a 
big project, right? I like to break it down to smaller steps so that when I take things off, there's also that sense of gratification and achievement. The next question we have to ask ourselves is, are you financially responsible? So as a freelancer, especially when you're starting out, there's going to be a few months where it may not be so good yet. You're going to have to wait till things really take off for your business as you set things up, as you build your portfolio. So that requires a lot of financial planning, a lot of really responsible saving and spending also just planning your own finances and deciding how much you want to charge clients all of this requires a level of financial responsibility and especially if you get to the point where you want to hire let's say a personal assistant an intern an accountant whoever it may be for whatever role that also requires really sound financial judgment and just planning and having all the numbers right off the top of your head. I think, I think one thing I had to understand is being a freelancer is not just doing the design work. It's really about being a business owner. So you're gonna have to take on a lot of those entrepreneurial business owner type of skills, which includes numbers, which includes really technical stuff, which may not come as naturally to designers speaking from my own experience, but I think these are really essential skills that we all need as business owners, just so that we take ourselves seriously and others can also take us seriously, especially since you're gonna be talking to business owners, you're gonna be talking to clients that either are a part of their corporation or are business owners themselves. You wanna be able to match that kind of intellectual level that they have when more business conversations do come up, such as scaling, such as building the business, such as increasing their revenue a lot of these terms which kind of tie back to finances and financial responsibility all of these are really important as a freelancer the next question is do you consider yourself a good communicator once again when you're talking to business owners and you're talking to people in corporations and managers and all your potential clients you're gonna have to be an excellent communicator not just when you're pitching but especially when you're presenting your work presenting your past work delivering the deliverables <laughs> you're gonna have to be a really excellent communicator because you are the forefront you are the face of your business you are literally the business so <laughs> you're gonna have to be very good at communicating and saying the message that you want to bring across really clearly so, so that whoever is on the receiving end understands what you're trying to sell what you're trying to do the success that you've achieved in the past the impact that you've created uh, all of this is really really important and especially a uh, part of being a communicator is being able to code switch because unless you already have a niche which is a whole other topic like if you have a niche as a freelancer let's say you only do wedding photography or let's say you only do SaaS products unless you really really dive deep into a niche and just keep selling to the same type of clients as a freelancer at least at the start you're probably gonna be a yes man you're probably gonna say yes to most clients that come your way and that means you're gonna have to be able to code switch and really understand the industry and communicate well to people within that industry so, that, so that's another really important skill that freelancers need to have communication another question to ask yourself is do you have an environment that keeps you productive as a freelancer you're not gonna have an office space you're gonna see the line between work and play and life be really blurred for example my room I would be working in my room and it made it quite difficult to really relax in this space because my brain would keep looking or glancing at my laptop or my computer or my desktop and I would start to feel like oh I should be doing work which is a really unhealthy headspace to be in so I think as a freelancer you're gonna have to be really disciplined and understand work-life balance and find places where you can be actually productive like it could be a co-working space or it could be a cafe just spaces where you find that you are really productive and efficient when you work there so that when you come back home it's a place of rest it's a place of solace and peace and a place where you can really just feel calm and rest so that's a great question to ask yourself are there places where you find that you can be really really productive the last question we can ask ourselves is do you constantly seek self-development or self-improvement 
as a freelancer you're gonna have to understand that the industry is constantly evolving there are so many tools that keep coming out so many trends so many new skills to learn so many new updates to softwares so as a freelancer you're really gonna have to set aside time to also keep up with these trends in corporate sometimes there are training budgets or there are just in-house training or even seniors who are there to teach you but as a freelancer you are a lone wolf you are a solo writer and that means that you're gonna have to do a lot of things yourself and you're gonna have to be very very self-motivated as a freelancer because think about it as a freelancer you decide how much work you want to take on you could be lazing around all day and maybe writing off the finances that you've made a few months prior or you could be hustling and getting that bag but having very very little time for yourself or for self-development or for family and loved ones so it really is up to you how you decide to maintain your own mental health and your own well-being and your own growth in all aspects like in life and in work and career you get to decide and as a freelancer I highly recommend having some kind of system or some kind of plan for yourself that all comes into being responsible and being a good business owner so with all these questions I hope that it gave you some prompts or some better idea as to whether or not you would be ready for a freelance career of course just because you're not ready now doesn't mean you you won't be ready in the future there are always opportunities and I'm hoping that these questions just gave you some idea to get started on this journey if you are considering it a quick update I am a full-timer now I put a pause on being a business owner uh, but I do want to focus a lot more on nomadomy so this isn't exactly freelancing this is more educational but I really love sharing tips and experiences and, and design knowledge so I'm hoping that I will be a lot more active on this channel and I will be sharing a lot more of my whole journey from freelance to full-time and everything in between and everything beyond so I hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, comment down below any other questions you may have or your responses to some of these questions. I love to read and just understand where you guys are and just connect with you guys. So that is all for this video. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!